Hi, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this. So we, here we have a magical little witch house perched on top of its hill surrounded by bats and creepy surrounding things. So this is a, a, an A5 piece of multifarious card that I have used elements to blend a really moody and mysterious background. I've used masking papers because I wanted it to be crisp and I've used stencils. My hands are absolutely wrecked <laughs> and I've used sequins and stickles and Slender Mushrooms mini stamp. I've used sticker sentiments. I've had great fun with everything. <laughs> I Not that I've thrown everything at it because there's no kitchen sink on here, but it's not far off. <laughs> okay, let me show you how it's done. Come with me. Right, I've got some Lavinia masking sheets and an A5 piece of multifarious card and I'm using the craft mat to help guide me um, as to how big I want my hills to be because yes that is what they are they are hills they are rolling hills and I'm using a large moon mask to give me that circular shape so yes, I have just made that super, super speedy so that you, you don't really need to see me painfully cut things out. And plus, if I do it this quickly, you don't necessarily notice how my hands shake, which, you know, let's not advertise. There we go. So I actually have three, um, three separate levels to this masking process. And there goes my hill, and on goes my moon. And we're going to blend a moody sky. So I've left that last one off, and I'm building it up. Elements Ink, Della Blue, large stencil brush, number nine, and just slowly building up a bluey sky. And as you go through this, you'll start thinking, if you're anything like me, oh, I think I should stop now. But then you've got to remember that you, you're trying to build up a moody atmosphere. So I'm adding here some Elements Ink Mulberry just to try and take it a little bit moodier. And you'll see it gradually take shape. But it all depends on what mood you want for the piece. Because if you wanted a happy-go-lucky one, then maybe you would have stopped at the Della Blue. Here I've got some Elements Ink Mermaid. And again, look at that extra tone that you get. So I've gone in, I've taken the moon mask off and I'm using Elements Ink Sundance and a stencil brush number three to just add a little touch of yellow to it. Once I've done that, I've popped that masking paper back on. Right, and now I'm covering up the sky because I don't want that to get disturbed by what I'm going to do with these hills. So here we go, peeling off the hills. So, with a large stencil brush again, I'm starting off with Elements Ink Mermaid. And I'm just slowly building up a base colour. And we'll have some Elements Ink Della Blue as well. We're just using all the same colours, just in different amounts so there will be some darker bits in the sky and some paler bits down below but it'll all balance that's my plan anyway so this is the flourish stencil and what I'm doing is I'm starting off with Elements Ink Bermuda and I'm just running circles with my stencil brush the large one um, over the stencil and then at the bottom, I'm going back in with Elements Ink Mulberry. So the bottom half of my stencil is going to have the mulberry on it, and the top half is going to be Bermuda. And together, when they mix, you'll get this lovely 
deep tone, which is going to be fabulous underneath what else we're going to do on here. So remember, Bermuda on first, switch to Mulberry for the bass. And please remember, I don't actually move this fast, so don't try and keep up. <laughs> and there's the mulberry again. See? I'm quite pleased with that. Creating the scene by stamping. So we're going to add some stamps now. So we're taking all the protective layers off, if you like. And so we are left with our background. Now, I've obviously decided it still needs to be darker in the corners for the frame. So I'm using Elements Ink Henna just to give us that extra. You see how moody that's starting to look? Sort of moonlit and spooky. I quite like that. If you limit your palette and keep it to the same shades, then you're going to end up with a lovely balanced piece of work. Okay. So I've got Versifying Claire Nocturne and I am stamping up one of the Zen houses. I chose this one because I just thought it looked like a sort of house that a witch might live in. And so that's why it's there. And we've got the Bats stamp set. And I've gone for the larger. I'm just doing it just over the moon and off into the sky. And we've got some Elements Ink Mermaid going down the bottom because suddenly I've decided it needs to be darker. And again, that's now balancing with the top. You see how dark it is at the top in the corners and we've got it going so dark in the bottom. Right, now, focus on what we're doing, Emma Jo. So I've got some Posca pen and I'm just going over the pattern of the house. And this one is the tree branch stamp, inked up in Versifying Claire Nocturne. And I'm just putting it as, at the top left hand corner. And it's going to act as a way of bringing us into the foreground. And also it's going to act as like a, an underlining to our sentiment sticker. So we're going to do the dark trees. Again, using Versamark. And this is still the tree branch stamp, inking that up and just placing it around the bottom half of the picture. And I'm going to use, once I finished, seriously. Okay, I'm going to use some WOW embossing powder. It's the Black Glint. I love this. Even before you've heated it up, it sort of, it just looks almost like a velvet. But with every darker shade we're going, it's becoming more and more moody and atmospheric. So now I'm heating up that embossing powder with my Ranger Heat Tool. And remember, if it curls, just heat it on the back and it should calm down. I've decided I, I want some slightly different branches going up the side. So using Versifying Claire Nocturne, and I think it's the Hazel, Hazel stamp. I'm just using the top branches. Turn them upside down, turn them whichever way you want, but just make it look different every time. So... With my black Posca pen, I'm just outlining where I want the top of that hill to be. And giving it a little bit of green, green of not green, seriously, black grass, just spikes. And maybe adding a little black as I go down that hill. What am I doing now? Mini slender mushrooms. So useful. I just fancied a little bit of something extra. I suppose I thought that they might have a garden of mushrooms that looked particularly poisonous, <laughs> as opposed to flowers. 
So this is our green Posca that I have just put some onto my craft mat, sprayed some water and I'm mixing it together just to start adding a little colour, like a watercolour base, to various parts of the house. Now while it's mean and moody in some ways, I also wanted it to sort of have a little touch of humour about it, which is why the house is multicoloured. <laughs> so that's an aqua green going on there as well. And don't worry if you decide that you want an extra shade by mixing both the apple green and the aqua green together. It's quite nice to just keep it between those colours. And now we're going in with some Elements Ink Mermaid. Again, we've already got that, remember? So I'm really just echoing a watery version of what we already have on the background. So this is the Bermuda. And that's just going around all the little dotty bits. Add a little bit of shadow under that gable end. And we've got Elements Ink Mulberry. And I'm just going to colour in that little chimney. And add colour anywhere else I fancy. Don't forget you've got that diamond pattern around the front door. So you could add more colour there. Right, we're going in with the Posca pens. Crack open the Posca pens. We're going in. So I've got the apple green Posca pen here and I'm just giving the bats a couple of eyes each just so that they can see in the dark. And using the same pen to do some green dots on the slender mushrooms. Do you remember me saying that they might have um, a garden full of poisonous mushrooms? That's what I'm trying to show there. And I've given them a green front door and we're going now to highlight bits of the branch. And I'm doing the same with the ones that are lower down as well. And I'm thinking about the way the light would be hitting these branches and maybe even how I want the light to hit these branches. So you're directing the viewer as to how you want the light to appear to them. So by adding white, you're just giving a little touch of light here and there and everywhere. Now, I bet you're wondering, bippity-boppity glue and the end of a paintbrush. Yes, we're going to add some bling. And I've got the festive sequin set and I've gone for the green circles and the smaller of the green circles. Now, to be honest, you're probably going to think, hmm, can't see these, but they're so close to black. When you put them in the black, they do sort of get swallowed up. But they're going to add a completely different level to what happens in those branches. Trust me, I promise you. The biggest problem is getting the sequin to let go of your finger. Okay, so I'm using green glittery Posca pen and just doing, I'm thinking of it as little berries, adding my sentiment sticker, which I've chosen magical. Gone in with the purple glittery Posca pen just to make that roof come alive. And adding it across the patterns that you see there as well. 
going in with the black Posca pen just to make that window sharper. So after all the colouring in, it might have just lost a little bit of definition. I'm using now the Stardust Stickles and I'm just doing dots. So that it'll just catch the light and look magical. Down the bottom, do you remember our green sequins and our green glittery green Posca pen? I've used lime green stickles to add to that. And there we go, we've got some Elements Ink Mulberry just to take the edge off that sticker and help it blend in a bit more. And with the apple green Posca, I'm just adding some paler berries or maybe even outlining some of the things that are already there and our white finishes it. And with that, the magic is complete. Hurrah, you did it. I've got to be really careful with this because it's still wet. I'm chuffed to bits with this. I love it. I love that we've got embossing on there. It reminds me, do you remember in Sleeping Beauty, the silhouetted, um, <laughs> brambles, for want of a better word, that rose up around the castle. I love that sort of dark, almost Tim Burton feel to it. And I love the Zen house. It's a, it, it just lends itself to a little witch with a pointed hat, doesn't it? So this could work for New Home, it could work for Halloween, for whatever you want it to work for. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Thank you for coming along and having a go with me. I will see you next time. Any comments? Any questions to do with this craft? Please pop them in the post below and I'll do my best to get back to you. You take care. All right. And remember, you must, you must have fun. Bye.